going on guys? Lance from FMG. Hope you guys are in for a doozy this time. Chapter 5 is incredibly long for this game. Um, I'm trying to think, where did... Oh, yeah, chapter 4 ends with Ruvik flipping the place and now we're in this crazy little um, creepy hospital-like area. So... I chopped up a lot of this footage because there's a lot of exploring. Really in this opening area there is only a few fights and they're with the invisible enemies again. And oh yeah, and there's that creepy little thing there too. Um yeah, there's just a ton of fights with enemies. Yeah, you can see them there. Um, it's just, like I say, these enemies got to be a little bit of a pain. I was hoping I could just shoot them in the foot and they'd fall, and then I'd be able to, um, just light them up real quick. So, I kind of just swing for the fences, hoping to hit them, and then I should really be using a shotgun. But yeah, so like right there, just, I was lucky enough to be able to light them up there. And then there's another one in here. I did uh, turn on that. You'll see the eye in the top center. I did turn that on just for um, these enemies because it was it was getting to be a pain. I was just like, ugh. So it kind of takes away a bit of the... I mean, it's not really like a scare factor, but just kind of... It makes you more prepared for what's coming up. So... Yeah, this chapter is really long. I think without all this footage, I edited out like two-thirds of it just because there's this opening area. There's just so much like exploring that you do, and it's like, you know, you're waiting for these guys to show up, and they finally do, so, but it's, um, like chapter four was really cool. Three and four were really fun. And then this chapter, I, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. I was like, eh, it's got that Outlast feel. So, yeah, you know, like I say, we kill that guy, and then we get this key card from the corpse to unlock a gate. Was it a gate or an elevator? I recorded this a while ago. Should be a just a gate. I was, I was waiting for that guy to spring up, but he doesn't. So, yeah, it's just a gate. And you get in there, I think this is where you meet up with your partner. I think. Oh, no, this is where you get a weird-ass puzzle. Um, this puzzle was a lot of trial and error. Uh, partially because of my own stupidity, and I was just impatient. Because, like I said, I wasn't feeling the setting in this one. Um, up to where I'm at now in the game, like... Every chapter, it's like a new area to explore, and it's really awesome. You know, it's not like you're progressing through, this, like, it's not like you're, like, say, for instance, like, Metal Gear, where, you know, you're just going through these like, these areas. So, yeah. Uh, this is the puzzle. There's these two buttons you have to push, and either spikes will hit the corpse in front of you, like that, or they'll come from the floor and just kill you instantly so it's um it's a real big pain in the ass i never really found out what the puzzle solution was i know probably once someone like markiplier you know those other channels that are more famous once they start uh showing their videos of this people are gonna be saying this is dumb it's just trial and error which there there is a way to solve it it's just i myself i was too impatient um which is another point that I've been bringing up is... Because I watch, you know, Markiplier, I watch Game Grumps. All those, you know, kind of like the other Let's Play channels. And it's like... People judge these games based off their footage. And it's just like... It, it baffles my mind. So... It's whatever, though. It's what gaming has become, I guess. So... Yeah, that puzzle, I... I'm going to break it down eventually and see just what the uh, the actual solution is. So anyway, the door finally opens, and this is, this is where we meet up with our partner, 
whom we've had no contact with since we were injected by Ruvik in Chapter 1, which I didn't record, because from what I can tell, most people have already seen what encompasses Chapter 1 just based off trailers, teasers, demos, etc. So, yeah, I get treated to a little cutscene here. Um, I have a feeling like that little tub that he's in, I have a feeling like in the real world we're all hooked up to something like that. And Ruvik's just like on the outside monitoring us and stuff like that. That's the speculation so far. So, I, I don't feel obligated to talk during cutscenes, cut but this is just, you know, a summary of chapter four and my, or I'm sorry, chapter five, and it is so long. Like, I think I just took, I think I did it in two sittings, because I think my, all my footage total was an hour and a half, almost two hours, just going through, exploring, trying to find everything, so... And I did a horrible job, too. Like, there's these little keys that you collect. And when I first recorded this stuff, none of it was... Um, I didn't find any. <laughs> um, I've gone back through and just kind of explored around and found stuff. So, yeah, it's going to take a while to find everything. And also, every time or every chat time you get to a new chapter, you always want to check, like, the newspaper stand and bulletin board that's in the... Uh, like that little nurse hospital area, which I'm assuming is your actual subconscious. So, anyway, this... Oh, uh, yeah. I cut out the footage of just us walking to this because it's really just us fighting a few guys and him disarming a door with a bomb on it. And he gets all wigged out looking. So, uh, there is a trophy for this chapter where it's coming up where you can't let him get hit during um the area where you're saving kidman and it is a pain in the ass like this guy he can take a few hits which is good but at the same time he's just terrible at avoiding enemies i've tried to go through and do it a few times just to get the trophy and oh my god it's so hard because this guy like there'll be times where I'm like right next to him there's a horde of enemies coming and I have my shotgun out and he's shooting at the same guys as me and it's just, yeah this area right here and it's just like dude get the guys that are not I'm get the people I'm not shooting at so yeah I thought it was like the, the whole part of the chapter you're with him he couldn't take damage but apparently it's just the uh this section right here which thank god so it is such a pain in the ass if i do it for sure it'll be on casual just because i don't feel like putting up with that shit or unless i do it on like a new game plus where i've got like a you know, a ton of a extra ammo and a ton of crossbow bolts or agony bolts. Because, like, I don't know, every time I've tried it since I've done this, it's like he's gotten hit by the time I get down there. So, like, the only way to really do it is to just, like, keep blinding enemies. So, yeah, when I was playing this area my whole goal was just to peg him in the leg and burn him but then I realized I think I only have three two or three matches I was like well and I thought we'd have to disarm that here and now for her but it's not the case you have to fight off all these guys during this whole section ooh, nice headshot during this section I don't think she can drown or have the tank get all full or anything so here I was lucky. Oh, I only got two. That sucked. I thought I'd get three guys there for sure. But there's enemies coming up later in the game. They kind of look like regenerators from Resident Evil 4, but they look like regenerators mixed with tyrants, and they can't be stealth killed. And when you burn them, they only burn one at a time. 
So, oh yeah, and the DLC that you get for pre-ordering the game, it uh, it's automatically added into your inventory after chapter three, I believe. So, oh, I was hoping for a headshot there. Um, definitely critical shots are the most important things to upgrade first for your weapon, I would say. Um, playing through the game now, I have learned you can cancel the reload animation. Like, as soon as you see the, um, like, you, you start reloading, and up by the weapon counter, you'll see what's in your clip now, and then what your reserve ammo is. And as soon as the clip ammo hits full, and he's, you can cancel out of the reload animation. So that'll be helpful for later areas of the game. Probably not so much with the uh, Agony Crossbow. Oh, I was hoping I could throw that axe, too. I think that was the f one of the first times I've used it. I was hoping I could throw it, but... It's just a uh, one-time use instant uh, kill. So it's pretty nice. Now coming up here is where the is where she can actually drown, I think. Or no, more guys show up. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, like this section is so freaking long. It's annoying. Like I think most of my footage is this. And it's just such a pain in the ass. Like this is where they start coming in with grenade or uh, dynamite. And all that good stuff. I was, damn, I'm a horrible shot with that shotgun. I still haven't upgraded any sort of my melee attacks in any capacity just because... Goddamn. I'm starting to panic. Um, like, it's not worth it until you get the full level 5 bonus of 200 and... 40 or 250 percent damage so like me oh shit dynamite and it, like once you get it to max then I could see where it would come in handy I was hoping that guy would run at me but he's just you know casually strolling it's like whatever grenades are also really handy Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh, I got lucky with that dynamite, too. It bounced right off me. So. Yeah, I think that should be about it. Oh, no. More guys with dynamite. Yeah, definitely to get that trophy, I'm just going to kick it down to casual mode, because... I don't know, I, I just hate... Like, if I didn't have to take damage while doing it, that'd be one thing, but for... My partner not to do it, my god. It's such a pain. <laughs> oh, I always try and take out the fat guys first. They are... They have so much health, it's ridiculous. I am... God, playing it on... I forget what the next difficulty's called. I think it's Nightmare. That will be a pain. Sorry for all the yawning, too. I totally forgot to uh, bring my ceremonial Batman cup in when I record. I always have it on my desk so I can drink up. Uh, and I'm trying to shoot the dynamite and blow him up, but not working. So, alright, now this is the part where you have to race over to a uh, dial or a transformer box somewhere to... Uh, shut off the water you're gonna lead through this back area thankfully that barrel's there it's pretty straightforward though you just run back and then there's one of the cells that's open and you'll just crawl under some stuff and then should be about a straight shot from there yeah up here and then um Joseph gives you the dial to unlock it. So anyway, at the time of me recording this commentary, I'm at chapter 9 right now in the game. And it's by far my favorite so far just because 
if you've ever wondered what Resident Evil 1 would be like with the, you know, updated mechanics from, you know, this game and Resident Evil 4, you'll know. Plus, they also have the throwback to, um, the old Resident Evil 4 where Leon was haunted and stalked by, uh, that guy with the hook or whatever he was. Anyway, I edited out a, a ton of footage there. You're in these tunnels. And you have to catch up to Joseph and Kidman. And it is a pain. Like, it, it's not really hard. It's just, you know... It's a haul. And of course the chick doesn't have any... Weapons. Flash bolts are your best friend, I can tell you that. Well, you, you guys already saw it in my, uh... Oh yeah, that was my the incendiary bolt. Which if you can if we could get a full stock of those, man. I don't know if they can burn enemies next to them or what, but it is incredibly helpful. Oh, and Joseph got a headshot it looks like. So but Yeah, this game is definitely what I wanted out of survival horror. It's um it's intense, it gives you panic. You're about to see some panic mode of me coming up. And I mean it's not like scary messes with your head scary, it's just it gives you that feeling where it's like I gotta keep going. Like if you remember my PT footage, I think I said this in one of the previous videos too, is like PT that that shit scared the fuck out of me. It was, oh God, Ugh. and it's not part of the fact that you know you can't fight back, because I see a lot of people complain about survival horror now. It's like the purest form of survival horror is where you know you're just exploring and you can't fight back, and it's just like okay, but it's hard to make a you know these big budget games where it's just you know you constantly running. Anyway, I'm gearing up here because I have a feeling some shit's going to happen. Anyway, more survival horror philosophy for another time. It's different for everyone, I can tell you that. So, Anyway, they get dragged down under, as do I. And it is time for a rematch with the, uh, apparently the, en or the lady from The Grudge. I don't, I don't, actually I haven't seen The Grudge in forever, I can't even remember what it's like, or what happened. Anyway, they're nice enough to give you a save room here, give you a journal entry about Sebastian's wedding. Uh, the cool thing about this game is going around and finding the files again. I love that, because... Not only is it a throwback, it's just a cool way to, um, you know, get the backstory figured out. Like, it doesn't have to be, you know, these big sweeping cinematics. It's just, you know, you finding out about it. And I totally saw that at the last minute, and I didn't move because I was waiting for an explosion and to die. And then, oh, look, <laughs> just spikes come out of the ground. So anyway, trying to peek around the corner here, you see that red light can never mean anything good. That's closed off, so I was like, all right, well, let's go in and get some ammo, some health packs, which I do believe I use right away. I did retune the controls back to the default because just clicking R3 to bring up inventory is so much easier than hitting the, uh, the home pad on the PlayStation. It's much easier. So anyway, and as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, damn. Rematch already? Uh, for whatever reason, I kept thinking this was another chapter. And, cause we just, you know, met her at the end of the last chapter. And now we're fighting her again, and it's just like, oh, alright. Anyway, all this shit's locked. And she, uh, gets burned by the flame, and you're like, oh! Has a weakness to fire. So anyway, before I go any further, I want to get some, uh, I didn't pick up the crossbow bolts. 
which five parts I think I can make an incendiary round. Shit gets expensive. So anyway, this is the boss fight. I don't believe this is the last we'll see of her, but we do take her down here. And uh, re-watching this footage, I do want to take note of how much it takes to get her down, because from the trophy list, it looks like for chapter 10, I think, uh, it looks like that's where uh, you finish her off. Um, and I was hoping to have more matches so I could limit her spawn points. I think I picked some more up. Yeah, I'm waiting for her to jump down there. And there she is. Boom. Light her up. Yeah, I'm just doing what I can. <laughs> and I think I lit myself. No, I picked up a torch. Yeah. The other thing, too, that you can't really do is let her get out of your sight. Because it's just like, you'll get screwed. I mean, she's pretty slow moving. But... I was looking for the barrel. I don't think I can shoot those yellow ones. Oh, this is where I test out the incendiary round on her. Yeah, and it, it works really well. So definitely for chapter 10, I'm going to save up a few of those. Yeah, that puts her back under, and like I say, you don't really see where she spawns. You have to kind of hear where she spawns and it is very panic inducing when you can't hear her and saying here I was looking for a way out a way to hit the switch and I think she shows up no but yeah I'm just trying to run so I can get a bearing and find her like I was in full on panic mode here she can teleport that shit ain't cool. I'm trying to save all my ammo. And of course you can't reuse the traps that you already used. So. So now this is just me panicking and running around trying to find more areas to use the environment against her. I think I'm out. I don't know why I didn't just, you know, look at those, uh, Look through those yellow barrels. So. Yeah, I really... I, I wasn't thinking, you know, maybe I can just shoot her. Because, you know, last time I tried to shoot her, uh, she just teleported. So. Anyway. Get some ammo here. Whip out the sh good old shotgun. I haven't really noticed a difference between the double barrel. Yeah, see, I just shoot her once with the shotgun and she burst into flames. I was like, what? I haven't really noticed the difference between the double barrel shotgun that you get from the DLC and the normal one. Because it doesn't look like you can upgrade the double barrel. So, anyway, get my green juices. And it's time to get out of here and end this chapter. At least I thought this would be the end, but there is one more section. Gives you away some plot details. Right about here. Like I said, I think in the real world we're all hooked up to this machine right here. We see Ruvik talking to... I believe that's Leslie in there. So, I do believe we are all hooked up because there is Sebastian, Joseph, Kidman, the Doctor, and Leslie all hooked up and it looks like there's five tanks to hold all of us. The only thing is that it really wouldn't explain how Ruvik is able to be in there and then also the, uh, the driver from chapter one or the first guy that you kill once you get the gun, Connolly. Wouldn't it, unless he's got, you know, like a bigger setup. But yeah, so anyway. The here's the brain 
with all the gizmos in it that you see throughout the you know Im promo images and marketing and stuff like that. So anyway, this stuff all lights up and enemies are spawning. And I think this is where you get to when you shoot them down you like pull out these tubes in their head. I was hoping for perfect headshots on both of those guys. Yeah, looks like, yeah, pull out the tubes and shit. Which, I haven't done that again yet since uh, I've done it in this little area right here. So anyway, that is about it for chapter, f actually that is it for chapter 5 guys once I take this guy out. So anyways, thanks for watching. Sorry this one was so long, I tried to edit as much as I could. So, uh, I'll see you guys next time on FMG. We're going to do Chapter 6. I had a few issues recording that, so it won't be the full thing. But, as always, thanks for watching. And subscribe is in the top right uh, corner. I'll see you guys next time.